99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's the BJ Shea Morning Experience. Greetings, fellow H-holes. I am said BJ. Again, uh, Double R was in a car accident, and we've just sent him to the hospital because he is delirious thinking that he could do the show. Even though he probably has some rib injuries, wrist injuries, and leg injuries, he shows up anyway. The guy is an animal. You know, total athletic, athlete, animal mind where... Just not thinking clearly. I mean, obviously, something's rattled up there because he didn't even have that same look in his face. I mean, it was just like, okay, he's on a different, he's in a different planet right now. Yeah. Even like Kurt wrote in and said, you know, you got to just get him to the hospital. The victim doesn't get a vote. That's a good point. I thought, yeah, it's perfect. Well, point. we had Nick. Now, granted, Mono Nick might not be the best guy, but he was the only guy we had available to drive him. Yeah, can we make sure, like, text Nick, make sure he does take him to the hospital and doesn't listen to whatever Double R says and brings him back to his house? Yeah, Nick actually, yeah, should dro- drop him off there at a hospital just so the company can, you know, we can feel good about our lives. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, so anyway, uh, we were supposed to have Mark Rudolph on earlier, but because of Double R getting in a car accident, we had, you know, obviously to take an hour off. But now we got him on the line. And, Steve, are you ready, sir? I sure am. Our next guest, he always does a great job on the Fox channel, Fox News channel, and I love it when he puts a mouthy chick in her place. Neil Newsflash, marriage is sickening. Mark, first of all, maybe the women in relationships with you are sick, mm. and certainly they would have higher blood pressure. A couple of segments ago, you asked me to imagine being married to you. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been hooked on Tums. So I think that's really what? where the sickness came in. Nick. <laughs> Please welcome to the show the, non- the, the no-nonsense man, Mark Rudolph. Yeah. Good morning, BJ. Good morning, Seattle. Good morning, Mark. Uh, it always is great to hear you on that show because of the fact that, uh, man, you know, it's funny. Those guys and those women that host the show, they don't even respond logically. You no. give them the good answers, and they still ask stupid questions or ask it as if you didn't answer them. It's got to be frustrating dealing with people for who, for whatever reason, political correctness, don't want to call women out when they're misbehaving, and you're like one of the only guys that does. That's right, because most men have vaginophobia. There you go, vaginophobia. You've, That's right. You've talked about that before. What is vaginophobia? Well, it's obviously fear of the vagina, uh, fear of getting it, fear of losing it, fear of dealing with it. It's unbelievable. Why do you think Valentine's Day exists? Valentine's Day is not Romance Day. It's No Man's Day. There's absolutely (laughs) nothing romantic about Valentine's Day. So why do guys do it? Why do guys do it? Because they're afraid that if they don't, they won't get laid. You're absolutely right, Mark. It it is always a holiday where I feel compelled and guilt-ridden, and uh, I even have a trip I'm taking this weekend where, unfortunately, because of this trip I'm taking to help my family, Valentine's Day falls right in the middle of that trip, and I'm still feeling pressure to somehow figure something out, even though, look, I'm taking you guys on a trip to help you, but I better also have Valentine's Day ready to go as well. Come on. And you said you feel compelled, and I think that's interesting because isn't that what love is all about? Yes. Compulsion? Yes, love is all about compulsion and right. conditions, isn't it? What I, I have the, Here's the image of the guy on Valentine's Day. Imagine a guy with his arm behind his back like this. Oh, oh, here's your gift. I love you. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day. And I women mean, don't that, want to believe that, Mark, but that really is what it is. Women look at us like, well, it shouldn't be that way, but they have no idea that that's how it is for us. It's the most unromantic day on the calendar. Romance is about being spontaneous, it's unexpected, it's voluntary, and it's mutual. And Valentine's Day is none of that. If you listen to or watch all of the Valentine's Day commercials on TV, they're saying, make Valentine's Day war- more romantic for her. And easier for you. You don't want to have a disappointed sweetheart. There's not one commercial that says, hey, ladies, why don't you go buy a menu saw? (laughs) That's right. How about a new cordless drill? Uh... Because what you get on Valentine's Day is pajama grams, but what he gets is something to fix the house. (laughs) I know. Again, again, you know what? The whole holiday could come to a screeching halt if men would just say no. And but it's they so don't. Yep. You, you, and Mark, I'll tell you though, it's it's indicative of our whole society. Men are totally mitigated in the society. We don't have the power to say anything. People people don't think that men have any wisdom to offer. Uh, it is something what has happened to men because of the feminist movement that has gone out of control. Yeah, I disagree with you. I just, I bl- blame it all on men. When you say men have no power, that's right because they don't exercise any. That's you a see good how point. People are out there marching in tea parties. Yeah. You've seen that, right? Oh yeah. Men don't do that when it comes to uh, women and 
child support and ridiculous alimony. They don't do that. Why is that, Mark? I don't understand that because you're absolutely right. We we are tough guys. No, and we're is not, it, we're, no, we're not. There are a lot of biological males and very few men. Yeah. And uh, again, uh, would you, have you ever heard of a drug dealer paying an addict to take drugs? <laughs> of course you haven't. Your laugh says it all. So why would you pay a woman to have sex when she wants it more than you do? That's why women have vibrators. That's why they have hand showers. Wow. Yeah. So why yeah. do you think that why does it make any sense to pay somebody to do something she wants to do anyway. How did that happen to us, Mario? We're talking to Mark Rudolph, by the way. Make sure you go to his website, thenononsenseman.com. And if you have any comments at all, ladies, Yeah, ladies, Mark, call up. Mark loves to take, because Mark believes that there's no way you can defeat any argument that he has. And boy, I've seen him do interviews, and the women usually have to resort to personal attacks or not even responding logically to the question. I mean, you know, they change the subject, Mark. You'll say, blah, blah, blah. You'll give some stats, and you'll always have great stats to back up That's what you because- say. That's because women are not ra- they, women are not educated about debate. This is what women are educated to do: wear short skirts and low cut tops, and you'll get everything you want. That's a good point. Well, there's no lesson about debate in that. You know, and if they were fair about it, Mark, you know, I mean, as a guy, if I would have no problem giving a woman what she wants if she didn't hold me hostage sexually, which you know, it's but, a, she, but yeah. she can't hold you hostage sexually. Here's a concept men don't grasp: you can actually say to a woman. You're not getting laid tonight. A man can say that to a woman. Wow. Right. And I've said it many times, and they get pissed. (laughs) Here's the thing. You asked before, how does all of this happen? It's very simple, BJ. Look at the way a boy is raised. One of the first things he hears in his home is, when mom's happy, everyone's happy. That's right. Then he hears, if your sister hits you, you're not allowed to hit her back. Then he hears, you can't ask a woman her age, her weight, you can't tell dirty jokes around her. You can't say bad words around her. And if you get laid, you're lucky. That's right. Dude. So that, boys we, are raised yep. to worship women. And then you have poor suckers who are married saying, a happy wife is a happy life. So everything revolves around women because boys are taught a bunch of lies. You don't have to kiss a woman's ass. You don't have to put her on a pedestal. And these poor slobs who get down on one knee to propose, I mean, my God, they deserve to be hit in the head. (laughs) (laughs) Four to one rock. When a guy gets down on one knee uh, to propose, he's basically saying, put the yoke around my head and control me for the rest of my life. It's It's like a dog saying, put on my dog collar. It's pathetic. But, guys, you always see guys doing it. Will you marry me? Down on one knee. As if, and as he looks up at her as the superior being. So when you ask, huh. how does all of this happen? I think I answered your question. It's all around us. It's girls, 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 girls. Everything about girls. Everything in school is about girls. Everything in the legislature is about girls. You ever hear Barack Obama saying, and how about that single dad out there? No, you're absolutely no, right. No, As a matter of fact, single yeah. mom out there. I've heard he's actually every Mother's Day he chast or every every Mother's Day or Father's Day Barack Obama will chastise all the men for right. the single parent problem. And right. I was like, how come you don't call out the women? They're the ones right, opening exactly. their legs too. That's was what's interesting, right? On Father's Day for the past two years, Barack Obama says, uh, uh, "Well, how come you guys are leaving your pregnant girlfriends?" Uh, and, but but yet he forgets in Roe v. Wade it says it's her body, her baby, her choice. So why is he criticizing men for the choices women make? Because, after all, a woman is the goalie of her uterus. That's true. But on Mother's Day, he doesn't say, hey, you girls out there without wedding rings on, how come you're getting knocked up? Exactly. You know, you know what, right. Mark? These are questions that, and, and women always sit there and go, well, if you don't, you know what? If you didn't want to dance, you, should, you know, you, without paying the band, you got to pay the band if you want to dance. Like, well, so do you. I mean, you're, again, you're also the one yeah, that, but, you but know. But it doesn't matter. It, you know, they say it takes two. Yeah. But Roe v. Wade doesn't say it takes two. Roe v. Wade says it's her body, her baby, her choice. You're right. You're absolutely right. Her wallet. 
Four two one rock eight hundred seven eight three rock and rock is seven six two five. So, ladies or any men, if you have any disagreements at all with Mark Rudolph, uh, feel free because Mark is uh, he's one of those guys that says bring it on. He has no problem defending his position and listening to anybody who has anything to say about him. Uh, but I would recommend, ladies, that you know what you you, you be able to debate well because Mark's good at it. Eight hundred seven eight three seven six two five. Let's go to Cheryl in Puyallup. Uh, Cheryl, you're on with Mark Rudolph from the No Nonsense Man dot com. Go ahead, Cheryl. Hey, Mark, I'm going to admit right off, I'm not much of a debater, but you did raise my eyebrow about something. You're talking about women that, you know, uh, back to the what addict, paying the addict for drugs or whatever, and that one right. that wanted all the time. And, right. Well, what about the women that, you know, maybe this isn't going to be a popular opinion, but the women that work hard, you know, maybe even go to school, have kids, and they're not in the mood. You know, they just don't, they don't want it. And I'm not condoning prostitution or whatever, but... There's There's no such thing as a woman who doesn't want it. She just doesn't want the man. Mm. If a a woman's with a man she craves, she wants it. Um, If you don't want it, that means you're not with the right guy. No. Well, you know what? Not true. It is true. I've been with a lot more women than you have. And let me tell you, (laughs) vibrator (laughs) vibrator sales are through the roof. And they're for, through the roof for a reason. Women want orgasms. And Cheryl, even if that's true for you, if you're the exception to the rule, that still doesn't disprove the rule. Yeah, women you, you women want sex. <laughs> women want well, sex, and that's why if women aren't getting sex, then they're going to be buying. They're going to be using their vibrators and their hand showers because they're just not going to. They're not going to just stop because they don't have available men. But to say that women don't want it, it isn't true. I've known women who. Our corporate executives are mothers, and they still want sex, even if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. There's no such thing as a healthy woman who doesn't want sex. And, and, she and doesn't Mark, want sex, you know, she's with the wrong true. guy. Not true. No. Well, no. you're we're Cheryl, talking about Cheryl. What are you basing, what? Cheryl, what are you basing it on, just you? No, a lot yeah, of Yeah, you are basing it on you, Cheryl, because it isn't no. true. No, that's, no. I'm Cheryl, Cheryl, on... listen, I've been with a lot but of women. Why, you're just why wrong. Why are so many complaints about Cheryl, they're you're just they, wrong. They, they don't. What? They Cheryl, don't Cheryl, Cheryl, you're just wrong. Cheryl, how do you explain? <laughs> Cheryl, Cheryl, if you go into those, if you go into Lovers or Castle, I mean, I mean, probably 80% of the stuff in that store is for women and their vagina. How do you explain that these stores do so well when most of the products in there are to actually titillate a woman? I mean, Mark's got a good point. Maybe you're not that person, but women apparently love to have sex because those stores That's are right. mostly for them. If you have a medical problem or a psychological oh, problem or God, a physiological no, problem, you don't want sex. If you're a healthy woman, you're going to want sex. I, I mean, Cheryl, I, I, it's, it's impossible to have. Cheryl, you, I mean, you're not. Look, at, just because you know a couple of people that you, that, oh, oh, by the way, who, well, by the way, unless you're in their bedroom all the time, you don't know what they're doing sexually, and you don't know if they're actually lying or being honest about right. their sexuality. But, Cheryl, you know what pisses me off, and Mark makes a good point, is that why is it that when women are in an argument and we have statistics, I mean, those, like I said, Castle and, and, and Lovers, all those stores that are all over the country that shoot, if you go into those stores, we, we guys go in there and we go, oh, God. I mean, a lot of the stuff they say, Sell are for women and, and basically pleasuring a woman. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not many things in there for a guy. I mean, when you think about it, compared to what they have for all the women stuff and all the lingerie and all the stuff. And yeah, I'm not going there to get a new towel holder. I mean, <laughs> that thing is used for a certain reason. Women, I mean, women uh, w- the, the reason I wrote my book Under the Clitoral Hood is because it explains that women are more sexual than men. They're built for it. It's very so true. Mark, you're right. For it. The I mean, their the orgasms are one purpose. Yeah. Sexual arousal. You're a man has right. no body part that is 100% dedicated to sexual arousal. And a woman can have multiple orgasms and a man can't. You put those together, a man can't even compete with that. So, you're, you're right, you know, Mark. They're, they're just asexual, more picky than us. If you're asexual, Cheryl, or if you have some kind of sexual dysfunction, you do not speak for the female population. Trust me, you don't. Mark, do you have a little time to hang on? Because we've got to take a break, but we've got Absolutely. more women that want to talk to you. Mark Rudolph, make sure you check out his website, thenonsenseman.com. He has written a lot of great articles. And like he said, of course, his book, Under the Clitoral Hood, it is, uh, I'll tell you, there's a lot of great stuff in there. And Mark does have a lot of different viewpoints about why we men are in the situation we're in. And he does. I, I think he makes a good point. I mean, we are such a we're, we're supposedly such a strong gender. Yet, who else is putting us under our own thumb but us? Because it just makes no sense. Yet, you know, you talk to men and they sit there and they do cower. 
when it comes to talking about women and having to stand up against women for your own self. More calls, questions for Mark Rudolph next on The Rock. This is the BJ Shea Morning Experience. I didn't need a book to learn about sex. I learned from women telling me I was doing it wrong. Call BJ now, 206-421-ROCK or 1-800-783-ROCK. The BJ Shea Morning Experience on 99.9 KISW. Ninety nine point nine K I S W, the Rock of Seattle. It's the BJ Shea Morning Experience. Greetings, fellow H holes. I am said BJ, and boy, uh, you know, an H hole is a person who speaks the truth. The H stands for honest, making you an honest hole. We're speaking the brutal and beautiful truth. And uh, Mark Rudolph is with us from uh, the No Nonsense Man dot com, and boy, he does that, no doubt about it. He's uh, really uh, represented men well whenever he's been guesting on Fox News and. Uh, you know, Mark, it's always a personal victory for me because every time they have you on, you uh, you keep your cool, and even though you get attacked personally rather than just address based on the facts, um, you do a great job for us. And it is it is amazing all of the men that do emasculate themselves in this whole process, uh, as you said. And it is weird because I don't think we we get that. I think we really feel like it's somebody else doing it to us. That's right. And guess what? I've been on with you now for about a half hour. Guess how many manginas from Seattle have joined my mailing list? Oh, really? You have a zero. lot? Oh, zero. zero. Oh, well, there you go. I, that's the zero. power of a, that's, that, that can be the power of our show, that's Mark. That's the proof. <laughs> that's the proof. I know they're coming to the website, but they're not joining the mailing list because they're afraid. Mommy might find out, <laughs> or my wife might get mad at me. That's the problem. You know, a, a, a few months ago, Maria Shriver proclaimed America a woman's nation. Yeah, remember you're that? Right, you're right. Look around you. You see bridges, highways, roads, airplanes, skyscrapers, all built by women, right? Mark, <laughs> yeah, all yeah, built yeah. by women, right? <laughs> yeah, I go yeah. across the, the Golden Gate Bridge and I say, "Wow, women did a fantastic job putting this thing up. It's great." It's interesting, Mark, because here in Washington State, 200,000 more women are registered to vote than men, even though there's nowhere near that kind of disparity as far as the population is concerned. What has happened to us that, I mean, even when it came to voting, men were always the ones that cared more. Even, you know, back in the day when women were fighting for, you know, rights to vote, women surely just didn't care as much about politics. What's happened to us? Here's what I think. I think when women uh, gained equality in the workplace, uh, it exposed men for the weaklings they really are. Men felt strong as long as women were baking cookies. But as soon as women got college degrees, and by the way, they get 60% of them now. You're right. As long as not, when women started getting college degrees and competing in the workplace, men were exposed as weaklings and cowards. So, you know, don't tell me you're a tough guy if your woman is at home baking cookies. And Mark, there's Here, a... You know, here's the thing. Yes. When the topic is Osama bin Laden, right. men are Rambo. But when the topic is women, men are Bambi. Oh, I like that. Bambi and Rambo. Yeah, it's pathetic. It's pathetic. And as I said on Neil Cavuto's show, the typical American man is built like a Ken doll, smooth between the legs. <laughs> it comes down to tears, tantrums, and sex. He'll do anything to avoid her tears and tantrums and anything to get sex, and that is it in a nutless shell. <laughs> in a nutless shell. Mark, I also, uh, somebody told me st- this statistic, and I don't know how valid it is, but it said, but I was told 80%, because you talked about how women are getting the college degrees, and now it seems like uh, schooling is definitely geared towards girls, and right. the boys have to deal with it. I've right. also been told that 80% of the children who are on Ritalin are men, and I'm wondering, that's a, that, that scares the hell out of me. What is, what is being done to men at such a young age? Well, that, that's because the standard of behavior in the school now is the girl with her hands folded neatly on her desk top and boys and when boys and girls are young boys are very rambunctious and girls are not so they want boys to be like girls and if you look at the typical home now uh it's either a divorce or the the woman never got married and so the boy is completely estrogenized from the time he from the time he's born and when he goes to school he has female teachers yeah and why does he have female teachers first of all for economics second of all for safety no man wants to be around kids anymore, so to become a teacher is a death trap. And second, for economics, as I also said on Fox News, if a, if a man goes to a party and a woman meets him and says, What do you do? If he says, oh, I'm a doctor, she thinks, House in Malibu. If he says, I'm a teacher, she thinks, 
Chevy Malibu. <laughs> so so he, he's not going to become a teacher. So boys, boys have, what do boys see in their lives? Mommy at home, teacher at school, men getting bashed in TV commercials and sitcoms, yep. daddy living in a one-bedroom apartment broke. So why would a boy want to grow up to be a man, let alone get married? Yeah, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, Mark, Mark you, you make a very, very and good point. And don't forget, all of the anti-male policies we have in our state houses and in the Capitol are, are enacted by men. And that is amazing. Because 85% of legislators are men. And yet this is happening. Afraid, it's back to the vagina phobia. They're afraid of their wives. A man doesn't want to, a senator doesn't want to go home at night to say, Honey, I just enacted legislation to help divorce fathers. You did what? You sleep on the couch. Yeah, I know. What I mean, it is, it is amazing. It, it really is, Mark. It's amazing how we have fallen this far. But you're claiming that we've always been this way. It's just that women never really had any power, so we were never challenged. Exactly. Wow, that's an interesting. I, you know, I hadn't thought about it that way exactly. before. So what? Because I went back to I forget which president it was. I wrote about this back in the. Uh, it was either the 1800s or the 1700s, and there was a member of the cabinet. I wish I could remember it right now. There's a member of the cabinet who was married to a woman of questionable reputation. And the wives of the other cabinet members uh, would not associate with him. So the president, I think it was might have been Andrew Jackson, said, I demand that you associate with this other cabinet member and his wife. And the men were so afraid of their own wives, they disobeyed the president. Wow. So, because, God forbid she should say, Not tonight. Unbelievable. Mark. Uh, a guy would rather wow. hear, uh, you have to go into the Army, than not tonight. <laughs> now, Mark Rudolph is here. we got folks that want to talk to you, Mark, and I, I encourage any woman that wants to call in and challenge you, 421-ROCK, 800-783-ROCK. So far, Cheryl was not exactly a great challenger because... No, she you know, stunk. you got to have stats, girls. You can't just go, well, I'm different, therefore it's not true. Right. You can't do that, ladies, and, and women do that a lot. Yeah. They don't look at the numbers. They just look at, well, since it's me, therefore the whole it must be true if I'm the one like that. Well, you know what? You know what, BJ? If I go to a party and I raise any of these topics, you know what will happen? The men will immediately leave the room. That's You know, you're absolutely right. And the I, women I ex- will yep. be left because they don't want to be associated with me because yep. they're afraid, I won't get any tonight. That's you're absolutely right, bro. And so, and then and then they're forced to just base because men don't want to take a look at their own weakness. I think that's, that's interesting. Right. That's Maybe right. that's why men get so angry. Because I've been in the same situation at parties where people have started bringing you know, women started flapping their mouths, and I'm like, you know what? I I just can't listen to your stupidity. I'm going to have to say something. And like you say, the men just leave, and then they get mad at me for ruining their evening. And it's like, guys, have some balls. Your woman's an idiot. She needs to be right. told that once in a while. Right. And by the way, I just got 24 signups to my mailing list. That's oh, great. Oh, look at that. But, yeah. but but, but, I, you know, that's Steve, by the way. Men, Steve, the producer, around, 24 emails. The other emails. thing, too, BJ, is you always hear this. Well, we're logical and women are emotional. Really? Valentine's Day is really logical. Yeah, you're right. You're no, right. men are not logical at all. Whining and dining is illogical. Totally emotional, totally unnecessary. Basically, dating and marriage is prostitution. Which, by the way, if, if the real prostitution was legalized, I wonder how many of us would even get married. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. But men, men, if you know, this is the other thing. I'll go to the gym, and guys will come up to me. Hey, didn't I see you on Bill O'Reilly? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah, you were great. Did you go to my website? No. Uh, well, I really believe in what you're doing. You'll go to my website, right? And you'll join my mailing list, right? Yeah, you're right. My whole life's been ruined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna go. You're gonna join my mailing list, right? Okay. The guy doesn't join. I see him in the gym a month or two months later. So how come you didn't join? Well, you know, I got busy. I have a lot going on. Yeah, 15 seconds of your time is a lot. So the fact is, they're chicken. They're scared. They're little cowards. It's disgusting. That's why women have taken over. Yeah, they have completely yeah. taken over. I, and that's I, I, why I, it is a gynocracy. It is a woman's nation. And by the way, given that it's a woman's nation, I would like to see a 100% female military. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, how long would we last? <laughs> we're talking to Mark Rudolph. Left. Don't forget to check out the thenononsenseman.com. That's where you can sign up for Mark's mailing list and find out about his articles, his two books that he's written. Let's go to Taylor in Seattle. Taylor, you're on with Mark Rudolph on The Rock. Go ahead. Hey, sir, I just have a question for Mark. Does he truly think that men as a whole are smart enough to implement his ideas? 
Uh, uh, Taylor, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, look around you. The space shuttle, the 747. The so why haven't they done it then? How, how do you think those things it? got here, Taylor? Exactly. They're brilliant over the years. But you're you know, not talking about... Mechanically, not, Taylor, mechanically. Taylor, but when it comes to talking, sexually, Taylor, they're morons. Taylor, we're not talking about intelligence. We're talking about spines. If you, No, you're asking men to be smart enough to forego these stupid holidays. Taylor, he, Taylor, no, Taylor, hold on. Taylor, he just told you, Taylor, he said it has nothing to do with intelligence. He said that it, it has to do with backbone, spine, and right. courage. They courage no is balls. not intelligence. They have no balls because they were raised to please their mommies. And they were okay, raised but, to but believe. you're saying, hey, look it, they're smart enough to do the space shuttle and do right. all this. Yeah, but right. you know what? They're not smart enough to... Ta- Taylor, how many times? Honest Taylor, to God, Taylor, it's like talking to, Taylor, a, it's like Taylor, talking to an idiot. Emotions, your emotions no. control your brain. Taylor, no, it's courage, no, not right, intelligence. Yeah. Okay, boys, if you can handle keeping keeping it in your pants for three nights and withholding like wait, your wait, 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 Taylor, Taylor. If they're smart enough to do that, then they can, Taylor, you know. You know what? Hold on a second. Now, Taylor, hold on a second. Taylor, 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 really, your, Taylor? Your brain no, you're all is controlled. Taylor, your brain is controlled by your emotions. No, I, I actually, are, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but I don't think men are smart enough as a as a whole to... Say no! I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do Valentine's Day. No, it's not an intelligence issue. The whole is the, the whole. Well, is he, he's the saying that we're, we're smart enough to do this. She won't shut up. We're smart enough to do this because we said it wasn't an intelligence Taylor, issue, it has Taylor. Nothing to do with intelligence. Well, then why did you bring up the space shuttle? Taylor, because you, you asked him if we were smart. <laughs> no, Taylor, smart enough. Smart enough to okay. Shut up! How are they going to implement your ideas? How are they going to do it? The way they have to. The way that Taylor, if you'll stop talking, I will answer you. The way men can implement my ideas is first to grow a pair. And that's right. where that's where the courage comes from, like the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> <laughs> they have to get they have to have courage. Without courage, their intelligence means nothing. Now okay. you're right, intellectually, it makes sense that if women are more sexual than men, that gives men power. But men don't believe in themselves. Because they've been raised since they were little that mommy is everything and daddy is nothing that's why back in the days of the long distance phone call costing something on mother's day you had the most paid for long distance calls and on right. father's day you had the most collect calls and okay. it starts as and by the so way taylor it starts two, young three, mark is what is your idea of a romantic evening like you now you tell me wait wait wait, wait. hold on romantic. hold on ta- taylor hold on that. taylor i want to know first of all if you agree or disagree with that rather than just changing the subject which women do a lot it, well, that is the no, strategy no. of a woman is you change no, the subject I, I when you're wrong think that it would take some intelligence i agree with what mark is saying because i do think it's a hallmark holiday i think it's meant to be us but you know I taylor i gotta tell you though taylor it's a pretty heinous thing though taylor it's Taylor, it's a heinous thing that at the yeah, at a tender age, a boy is raised to basically fear his mother and yeah, basically give her what she wants, even yeah. if she's completely illogical and abusive. Right. This is it starts young, and you and, and that but is something that is hard to, to to grab a hold of your ideas. Oh, really? wait, oh, Taylor, wait, 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 Taylor, Taylor, is it easy for a woman to uh, just just basically dismiss years of abuse or emotional trauma in order to be able to do something? We think as a man, you should always come forward when you've been raped to prosecute a criminal, but women have told us it's a it's a horrible traumatic thing, difficult to do. So why can't you understand that there are things that are difficult for men to do, no matter how smart they are? Okay. Why is it women don't understand that men have hormonal <laughs> issues and that men have traumatic issues? I mean, and you're laughing about it, Taylor. Why do women laugh when they're no. about to lose an argument and when a man is talking no, about no, no, pain? No. Why no, do you uh, laugh? Uh, obviously, you do have issues, darling. I'm why not, do you I'm laugh though? You why would you laugh when a guy no, is talking about pain? How would you? La- I know screaming. because you're <laughs> laughing. I mean, I'm, you're, you're, you're you're laughing. Getting emotional. Now you're getting emotional. Yes, because right, you're so laughing. Down. I'm hey. emotional. Would you like me to laugh at you if something bad happened to you? Why do women do that? They laugh when a man is trying to tell them that he's no, had pain in his life. You're telling me that I'm being emotional now, darling. You're being emotional. I understand Taylor. I'm being emotional. Hey, Taylor, I am being emotional. I told you that. I know that. I want to know why you laugh when a man is explaining something painful. You and your gender do no, that a lot. You were, you why were do you laugh? Me for getting emotional. And I, now, so now you, you oh, are getting that's emotional. why you laughed. You laugh because I wanted to know why. It is you don't understand when we try to explain to you things. You, I mean, as a woman, no, if you're if intelligent, you talk to me, I wouldn't be laughing. But, but you're, you're Taylor, getting emotional. I got emotional when you laughed, Taylor. I got emotional when you laughed. BJ, 
All right, BJ, let me let me p- propose a scenario here. Go ahead, Dave. Go ahead. Because, Mark, I'm, I'm ready to propose something to be I'm done gonna... to this woman that would involve sharp objects. All right, I'm going to propose tickler. a scenario to Taylor that would okay. highlight the intelligence, the intelligence of women, okay? Okay. A woman goes to her group of girlfriends and says, guess what? I got engaged. And they say, oh, 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 show me the ring. And she says, no. There is no ring. We decided not to have a ring. And they would say, you did what? What do you mean there's no ring? How come there's no ring? Is he a cheap bastard? What's wrong? How come there's no ring? Now, that's exactly what would happen, and that shows the intelligence of women. Yeah, and I agree. I think that a woman should buy a man a sports car. When he hands over rings, she should have to buy him a sports right, car. But, but, I do agree uh, with you all right, on certain right, levels. Taylor, and then the don't... dudes would be really excited about that engagement. They'd be like, you're engaged, sweet, let me see the car. Right, so, Taylor, Taylor, what don't Taylor, you, don't, you, go, what don't you, you agree with that? that idea to your girlfriend. I, I, no, my question is, is, does he think that men will truly implement these Suggestion. I think most men will not because most I men do, are not men are biological males. That, was, that most, was my only most question. Most women, most women are not women. They're little girls inhabiting adult female bodies. Most women are children That's a who good expect point. to be taken I, care of I and wined and dined. So, frankly, uh, there are about, about the same percentage of adults are actually children, but the difference is. Men think they have to pay to get laid, and that's why they're so illogical and irrational. And by the men way, men don't have yeah. to pay to get laid. And Taylor, and Taylor, men are courageous on so many levels. We see it in, in when, when they have to go to war. We see it when they protect their families. It is just when it comes to women in their life, and that is because they've been indoctrinated at such a young age to fear a woman, fear the mother, fear your wife. And I would say to women, you know, you, you're you the guys that tell us that's what we have to do. We have to behave a certain way around you. You tell us not to be certain ways. You don't like parts of our personality. We are browbeaten at a young age. That's why we have courage issues, because it is so ingrained in us from as a child. It's a, and any psychologist will tell you that childhood dynamics are what indeed are the toughest things to work through. When you when you develop those survival patterns as a child, it is so hard to defeat those. And the father the father plays a bad role in this too because he teaches his children, "Oh, just give mom what she wants." And you know what, though, Mark? Again, it's because that's what he was taught as a young age. Right. I mean, it's, it's then, pretty insidious. And then and then when the teenage boy goes out with his teenage girlfriend. And uh, the parents to discover that their their clothes are off, they blame the boy. Of course. And then I wrote an article called one of my articles is called "He Got Me Drunk." You ever hear a woman say "He Got Me Drunk"? It's impossible for a man to get a woman drunk. She opens her mouth, she swallows the alcohol. If we hold a woman accountable for her alcoholic consumption when she climbs behind the wheel of a car. How come we don't hold her accountable for her alcoholic intake when she climbs on top of a man? All of a sudden, she doesn't have any accountability for herself when a man is involved. The whole society says women are babies. We have to take care of them. Well, we got Carl on the line, and I, I want you to speak to this guy, Mark, because Carl is a man that doesn't agree with you, and this is the guy that needs your tutelage. We're talking to Mark Rudolph, the no nonsense man dot com. Uh, all right, Carl in Seattle, you're on with Mark on the Rock. I'm not saying I don't agree with you, Mark. I just think uh, you have some mommy issues. It sounds like, and I think uh, you didn't get uh, very much action. Well, well, who, uh, uh, where, where, where did you get your PhD? And my PhD, no. Well, where, what do you mean I have mommy issues? I'm just saying. Uh, where, where are you getting this from, about, Carl? And again, I. Uh, where are you yeah. getting this from, Carl? I'm what about what I said the, makes the, the, makes I'm you think I have mommy, mommy issues? I'm not saying you announced that. I'm not saying it's what, what did I say? What did I say that makes you conclude that I have mommy issues? You're saying that Mama. that men are afraid of their mothers. They you are know, raised in an estrogen-filled family. And That's right. Those are facts. So you've taken what polls? Can't you look around you? Do you know the statistics of divorce and out of wet? Do you know that 40 percent of babies in this country are born out of wedlock? 40 percent. I believe that. I, I, Irrelevant. 50% of marriages end in divorce, mother, and women get custody in 90% of situations. You that's do the math. Yeah. You do the math. That's 
that's circumstance. That's what you're making. Mark, Mark, you, Mark, do you mean to tell me now? Granted, I don't have any statistics, but it's it's anecdotal just because of how I was raised and everybody around me. But Mark, you mean to tell me that you were never raised in such a way that your mother was to be treated a certain way, and and your sisters and your and the girls in your life they weren't to be treated a certain way as men would treat other men. You never had that happen to you. You were never told to have special treatment for a woman ever in your life. We I all were. I absolutely was taught that. And how I about you, Carl? Rejected. And Carl, how about you? You mean to no. tell me that never happened to you where for no good reason you were told to treat a woman differently for no good reason? Like no, you know, I, I absolutely was. And to be honest, I have a mother that I care for very much and respect. Oh, yeah, it's not well, about res- and, you and can and respect listen, somebody. And, but and that wasn't three, the question, sisters, Carl. That sisters. wasn't the question. Were you ever told it doesn't mean? I'm not saying you're not supposed to respect somebody and treat them well. No, no I never, but, said, I never yeah. suggested that. But Carl, did you? You were never told by anybody to treat your sisters and your mothers differently than you treat your friends and your boys and and your father. You were never told to treat them differently for no good reason except based on their gender. You're, you're going to say that never happened. No, no, no. I, I have been. I have that's been. where he's. That's where it comes from. There's no mommy issues. It's about how women are babied and and allowed to act inappropriately and allowed to act in ridiculous ways and be given a free pass. It starts when we're young. We're told we have to give them a free pass for their stupid, uh, over emotional behavior. How about ladies' nights at bars. I got an email from a guy the other day who said two hundred people in his circle were going to have a Super Bowl party. They were going to charge men thirty-five dollars and women twenty-five dollars. Why? Right. No, there's favoritism there. Absolutely. Of course. I, so I what are you talking about, Carl? I don't want to stand Carl? on the side of women and completely. Women do not deserve special treatment. Yeah, they Carl. It's equal yeah, you know, treatment. Twenty ten, Carl. It's equal treatment, but we're not raised that way. That's what he's saying, and that's not mommy right. issues. It's the truth. We're not raised to believe that women are equal. We're raised to believe that they should be treated more than equal. When you put when you put a woman on a pedestal, you're actually condescending to her, because you're right. saying you know, you're not I, equal to me. I agree with that. You know that there's favoritism for sure. So then, why would you say somebody has mommy what, issues then, Carl? So what is wrong with you, Carl? You, he sounds angry. That was my first point. He sounds you sound angry. About why would you it? be and, angry oh, if you were up, raised Carl. that you're way? Just a mangina. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's my other point, mangina, nothing. That's crazy. Uh, Carl, but it's no, Carl, it's not true. Hold on, Carl. That's not true. Carl, let me be honest, and I think you should be honest. One of the most fearful things a man has to deal with is a woman who's angry. Let's be honest. It's one of the most difficult things that most men I know have to deal with. We run away. We run away from it. He reverts back to everything, being back to a man being scared about getting play. A man about getting action from his wife or his girlfriend. That's right. That's true. That's not true. It is true. What's going on? And, it all, and Carl, it all descends from you not getting love from your mother. You do not want to not get love from your mother, so you'll do whatever you can because you're browbeaten at a young age basically to be emotionally extorted. Your mother won't love you if you don't do everything you're supposed to do the right way, and that translates to every other female relationship we have. And is it, if you get that ingrained in you as a child, as a little boy, when all of a sudden all of our neuronic patterns and everything we're supposed to do are being formed, you are you, you don't even realize realize it but you are wired to believe that you have to do everything you have to do the right way or a woman will reject you and no man wants that and it's not fair because you're treating her the way you treat anybody else and you're still getting rejected i have i have had many debates on tv with men where the men say apologetically honey honey please don't worry i'll be home soon i'll buy you flowers always apologizing always kissing ass it's pathetic Pathetic. I mean, Carl, it just starts at the root Guilty. level. It's, I mean, and look, bro, you probably don't even get it, and maybe, maybe that's why you're a little upset and you're calling in because there's a little truth to it. It starts at a young age for us. It's not like we knew what was going on. The reason he's calling in is because he's whipped himself, and his girlfriend controls him, and his mother controls him, and he doesn't like to hear a man speaking out because in the United States there's an eleventh commandment: "Thou shall never, ever diss a woman." And if you do, you're a misogynist. You've been dropped on your head. You've been burned. There's something wrong with you. You can't disrespect a woman. You can't, uh, you can't even criticize a woman. You can't criticize a woman You're just because a happy man is a quiet man.
It's very true. So we're Mark. not used right. to in this culture very of true. men speaking out ever. That's true. And men true. just shut up and they take it. And surely women criticize us all the time, Carl. So what's the difference about what Mark and I are talking about? There's right. no reason. You shouldn't even be standing up against right. it. Look at the TV commercials. I just mm-hmm. wrote an article about the TV commercial where the Doritos commercial where the little boy slapped an adult man. We talked about that too, uh, right. Mark. Yeah, we did. Right. I wrote an article called Doritos Slaps Children in the Face. Because what Doritos is doing is teaching children to disrespect men. So Elon Nordegren can hit a man. Mary J. Blige can hit a man. A little boy can hit a man. But if we had changed that Doritos commercial to a boy hitting a, uh, a, a girlfriend, let's say, let's say the father invites the girlfriend over, and the girlfriend says, Mmm, nice house. Boy, I'd like to have it someday. And the boy slaps the woman in the face. Yeah, stay away from my house. TV? Yeah, stay away from my dad's money, my dad's house, and my dad's Doritos. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Mark. Right. It, and, and it's and a double a standard. And commercial right now where a little boy hits his grandfather in the balls. So yeah, disrespecting you, you, men yeah. is in vogue. Everywhere you go, when Mary J. Blige punched her husband in a nightclub, she then said, what are you going to do, Chris Brown me? So don't tell me there's no. You really need to take a good look in the mirror. Because you're afraid of women. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a great way that we end this interview with Mark Rudolph. No doubt about it. Mark, it's always great to have you on, bro. And I appreciate you fighting the good fight. I know that, man, you're always going uphill like, you know, you're really upstream like a salmon. But I appreciate what you do because guys like us need to know this. We need to know that it's not fair and we're the ones contributing to the unfairness. That's right. We just have to to stand up. Men enable it. And men finance it, and they have to stop it. And by the way, I've now had 100 sign-ups from your show. How about that, Mark? Huh? I signed up today. How about That's that? Fantastic. I'm in. Now, well, I, 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 I signed up. BJ, let's not wait another year. Let's do this again. I agree, Mark. We, we would have to do it another You know what? You've got to get through Steve, though. Steve is the gate. He's the gatekeeper. You're going to have to bribe him, Mark. I'll read that. Get him a girl. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I got a girl. <laughs> oh, that's right. He's about to get married. He's about to get on that road, Mark. Save him, Mark. Oh, Save he's, him. Gonna be, he's jumping on the Estrogen Express. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, Mark. So go to the no nonsense man.com. Mark, thanks for being with us, and we will have to get you on soon. I appreciate you calling in, Mark. My pleasure. Thank there, you, BJ. There you go. Mark Rudolph, and there you go. Honey. You know, it's tough for men to realize the truth, and so what we do is we push against the truth. I mean, look, I've been into my therapy to know that when you get to a core truth that is ugly and you're the one responsible for your own pain, you don't want to face it, and you will you will fight to the death and have to face the fact that you've caused your own pain. And um, I don't think women can face the fact that they train us at a young age to treat them differently so that they don't have to be as good as they can be, so they don't have to play by the rules. And it's done at a young age. And he's right. As a father, um, you know, I probably have done it myself, and I feel so badly thinking that maybe I've done that to my kids. So it's, still not too, it's still not too late. And women, honestly, really, do you want to have it that way? You, you, you want to be treated differently no matter how stupid you are, no matter how disrespectful and misbehaving you are? You should want to aspire to be better than that, ladies. You know you do. This is the BJ Shea Morning Experience. Remember the kid everybody ignored on Valentine's Day? Loser. Call BJ now. 206-421-ROCK or 1-800-783-ROCK. The BJ Shea Morning Experience on 99.9 KI.